Welcome back to Jacques in the Garden. Today we are going to be planting a Three Sisters Garden, also known as a Milpa style garden. This is an ancient indigenous technique that has been practiced for a long time here in North America. And I believe the Iroquois nation is the one that named it the Three Sisters Garden. Now, Three Sisters can mean a lot of different things, but the most traditional method is that you grow corn, beans, and squash all together. Now, I'm gonna be talking a lot about this. It's kind of, I would like to consider it a technology because they actually were able to produce more calories, more nutrition, more protein from a single plot of land than something like a monoculture that we do today. So let's get started by planting corn. The first step of a proper Three Sisters garden, it's actually something that you plant in stages. So you plant your corn first, then your beans, then your squash. There is a reason for that and we'll talk about it. And it's because the three sisters work together to grow well together and actually produce a more abundant harvest. Now the corn that we are going to be planting is Martian Jewel. This is a variety that I've grown previously and actually have some saved corn cobs with seed still on them. Now the really cool thing about this corn is that it's not a specialist. So it doesn't have to be a single thing. This corn could be eaten as sweet corn. It's not going to be as like sweet as a traditional super sweet corn that you might be used to if you grow hybrid style corns. But the really cool thing is that if you let it dry like this, then you could actually grind up these kernels and make flour out of it. So it's a truly multi-purpose corn. And that's actually really exciting for me because I wanna plant this whole block here with this corn. If I were to do it all with sweet corn, it would simply be too much corn for everyone in the household to actually eat it all. So the cool thing about this is that I'll get my sweet corn. Once we're satisfied, whatever is left on the stalks is going to be used to make cornbreads, flowers, masas, whatever we want to try doing with it. So without further ado, let's make our grid lines and I'll talk about the setup for the way that I'm going to be planting this specific Three Sisters Garden. There are a variety of ways to plant a Three Sisters Garden, whether you do it in mounds or you do it in blocks, I'm going to be doing it in a block system. So the way this is going to work is that the center of this area is going to be densely planted with corn about six inches apart from each other. On the outer ring of everything will be the beans and then up front will be the squash or maybe back here if the onions get harvested. We'll talk more about how those different sisters interact and help each other, but first we need to plant the corn. I have a two by three here, which I'm going to be using as a sort of guide or like a ruler to make a nice straight furrow here. I wanna make sure that my corn block is looking very neat and tidy because I just want it to look like a nice block of corn. Now, when I move this, I have a good guideline here where I could plant my corn in a straight line. Now, since this corn was a um, home save seed, I actually am not sure what the germination is going to be like. I should have germ tested it, but I didn't. And now it's too late to do that. So what I'm going to do, and hopefully this won't backfire, is I'm going to be planting two kernels per hole. That way I could guarantee my germination is good. Now, this might end up being annoying because that means I'll have to come back and thin out any extra corn, but I don't wanna leave empty spots either. So to me, this is the better trade-off. So there's one there, two seeds, and then we're gonna do about six inches apart. And I'm gonna work my way down, and then we'll cut in another furrow. Now that all the corn is planted, I'm going to give it some amount of water, and then I'll probably top dress it with a little bit of compost just to make sure that every kernel is buried deep enough. Fortunately, the water is actually draining quite nicely into the soil. So I'm gonna just keep coming through and giving it some more passes until it doesn't wanna drink anymore. Now for a little bit of compost to help fill in all these gaps. So here I'm just using the flat side of my rake so that I don't actually dig, but I'm just kind of trying to spread this out, make sure that every furrow is covered. Not applying any pressure. In fact, I'm trying to lift it a little bit so it's just barely skimming on the surface here. Just going to be a little bit of walking here while this gets established, but the soil should be totally fine underneath. So this is all ready to go. Now the only thing left to do is to wait for it to grow. Then we'll check back. It'll probably be about two to three weeks. So I'll see you then. I have a quick Three Sisters Garden update for you guys. It's kind of good news and bad news. The good news is that the corn germinated extremely quickly. It's only been a week since I planted this. The bad news is that almost every single seed germinated. So my strategy of double planting in case the seed was bad, turns out I was wrong. I should have germ tested it earlier, but at least now I have at least one guaranteed corn plant per hole. So the next thing to do is come through and pinch out every other seedling. So I only have one in each spot, but this is looking great. Probably next week, we'll be able to plant those beans. The corn has now been growing for about three weeks and it is looking really good. It's quite tall, it looks very healthy. 
I have almost no bear gaps and I've already gone through and thinned out all the doubles since I planted two seeds per hole. And now it's a perfect time to start adding in our climbing beans. In this case, I'm going to be using Scarlet Emperor. It's like a Scarlet Runner bean, but slightly improved. And by far the Scarlet Runner beans are my favorite category of runner bean. Big beans, nice pods, big flowers that the hummingbirds love. Now they also look really pretty. It's a nice looking bean. So all we need to do is come in a couple inches. So these are inch marks on my little uh, dibbler here. So if I go one, two, three, anywhere from three to six inches should be safe for the corn. I'm gonna shoot for somewhere around three just to make it easier for that bean to set its tendril up and attach to the corn. So I'm gonna take one of these big beans and with beans like this, you can just lay them on their side and they'll go just fine. When you do this, you wanna make sure that your corn is basically at least this big. So let me put my little ruler here. So one, two, three, four, five, six inches is the minimum you want before you put your beans. If you put it too early, the bean tendril will come up, snag your corn plant and pull it down. But now that it's this tall, by the time this bean emerges, this corn should be sturdy enough to actually handle that weight of the bean. So now the only thing left to do for today is to come through and plant the rest of these beans around the entire perimeter of this corn patch. Quick Three Sisters update, the beans have officially come up. So I see one right here, another one right there, and a third right over there. So now that the beans are up, we are well on our way to a Three Sisters garden. The next step is to harvest out the onions over here and then we will be planting this with squash and they will vine into the corn patch. So I wanted to do a quick update on this Three Sisters Garden corn patch. Now I will say that this is likely turning into a Two Sisters patch and that's because there's a very sad sister down here which you might be able to see but we'll take a closer look in a moment. The squash is just has no chance of catching up. I didn't expect this corn to be as vigorous and insane as it turned out to be. But luckily, at least the second sister is starting to do its work. I'm starting to see the beans actually climb up to this high on the corn plant. And there are actually setting beans and there are a lot of flowers. So let's take a closer look inside. But really, the Martian Jules corn is a total stunner. And I don't know why it didn't grow last year because I forgot how beautiful it truly is. Here we are on the back side of the corn patch where it is nice and shady and the shade is actually part of the problem. Here's one of my sisters right here and it just really doesn't look happy. It's very yellow, at least the lower leaves are, and it's starting to grow, I think, but it's definitely not growing fast enough to make a difference. So it's providing zero mulch in this case. I should have planted it earlier when I started the beans, but that was my mistake. Over here, you can see some of the climbing beans. They actually do look pretty good, and they're on this side a little bit shorter than the other side, but it doesn't matter if the beans are late. And that's because the corn will be ready to harvest and then I'll leave most of it to dry down on the stalks. During that drying down process, these are gonna be perfect trellises for those beans. The downside is that I won't be able to flip this about as quickly, but then I'll get a ton of beans in the end. So there's no loss here. It's just that the timing of this corn was way more vigorous than I ever would have guessed. Right here, you could see the Scarlet Emperor bean and these little red flowers are soon to be beans. And over here, it's hard to tell, but it is trailing off and starting to climb the actual plants. So it is actually working as expected. Like I said, it's just a little bit behind, but it's no big deal. Fourth of July has long passed. We are now here in October, and it's time to actually harvest our Martian Jules corn. This is of course the main sister from our Three Sisters patch. And I didn't really do a lot of updates in between the actual planting of the beans to this point. But as you could see, Things are looking pretty dire, and actually that's the way I want it to look. I wanted all of the corn to dry down. I did harvest some for fresh eating, a sweet corn, and I actually talked about it into when to harvest summer crops for their peak flavor. But the rest of this was left here on purpose. We have a lot of corn to collect, see how many cobs we actually get. We also have some dry beans to collect. There's quite a bit of dry beans here from the ones that we planted alongside the corn. And there's even actually a couple squash in the end. I mentioned that the squash was extremely sad down here in the shadows, not getting enough sun, but ended up growing above my corn patch and actually setting fruit from above. And I've already collected two kabocha squash from it. So I'll show you those, but I believe there's at least another two in here that we have yet to harvest. You might find it easier to just get a pair of pruners here and snip off the beans, because once they're dry, they can actually be pretty hard to get off the plant. While picking beans, I actually just found this kabocha squash over here, which just snapped off the stem, which is totally fine. But that's a nice squash right there. Every single kabocha that I've harvested this year has been absolutely wonderful and delicious. I'm hoping that this one is no exception to that rule. Finding the beans in the patch here was actually harder than I expected, but I have a nice little collection here. I know there's a lot more in there, but now that everything's dead, it's honestly pretty hard to tell. So I'm gonna go ahead and start chopping. 
pulling corn, pulling beans, whatever we find along the way, and we'll see what we get in the end. The risk of drying corn on the plant like this is that you will get a couple moldy spots, but since it's dry, I'm not too worried. All I'm going to do is, if I see that, I'm gonna go ahead and pick those couple kernels out for now. The rest of it should be fine. Here's the final cob. It is now clear of any of that fungal stuff, and this is totally good to go. Since it's dry corn, I'm not too worried, because we're probably gonna boil this to make masa, so, I'm not too worried about a little bit of stuff on the outside. It's all gonna get washed off. Check this out. This is one of the aerial squashes I mentioned. Here you could see the vine. As, as I mentioned, it was climbing above the corn. And what happened is when the fruit set, it got too heavy and then it landed itself right down here. And here's that beautiful kabocha up close in person. <laughs> I know this is gonna be good. Every one I've had so far is delicious. Let's go ahead, chop this corn patch down, see what we get and see how much of every single harvest we could actually muster from this patch. Well, that ended up being quite the mess to deal with. <laughs> I am covered in all sorts of little fine stuff. And we have a absolutely ginormous pile of organic matter left over from all of that. But that's not what we care about right now. What we care about is dealing with all the corn that I've piled up on the floor here. So I'm gonna go ahead and gather it up. We'll clean it up. We'll see what we got in the end. I think there's something crawling on me. And I'll show you some of the kabocha squashes. I think the beans were actually in the end, the worst performer, which was a surprise. I thought the squash for sure would be the worst, but I have three squash right here and I've already harvested three from this patch already. So that's actually quite good. Let's go ahead, gather this corn up, clean it up, see what we're left with. All right, let's do some cleanup. I figured a birdie's bed is a perfect height and this is the only one I haven't planted so far. So it's a great candidate for holding up all this work. What I'm going to do is snap off the corn cobs take this, save it in this bag. I don't know if I'm gonna mess around with making a dye out of it, but it is something that I could technically do. Now, any of the ones that look a little bit suspect, I'm gonna put in a separate tray because I don't wanna deal with them all right now, but I might consider dealing with them later. I'm sad to say that the rats got quite a few of these corn ears. I think in total I've counted about 10 that were nibbled on or fully eaten like this. And remember, I harvested about at least 20 a sweet corn earlier in the season. So overall, not too bad. This is a little bit less than I expected, but I have to keep reminding myself that we ate a ton of sweet corn and I lost them to the rats. Now, I do wanna kind of check out some of these beans. I'm not gonna go ahead and shell all of these. I just wanted to show you guys how pretty they are. We love beans and bean soups. So for me, this is a wonderful harvest to have because it's kind of expensive to buy runner beans like this, especially like these Scarlet Runners. These big beans make such a delicious broth when you make a bean stew. And there they are right there. So here's the final tally, guys. We got quite a bit of corn, honestly. This is a lot of corn, especially considering that I've harvested at least 20 of these as fresh eating corn. I have some frozen in the freezer, chopped off. So corn, very, very good yield. Very happy with that. Probably because I planted it so densely, it just gave me a lot more corn. Now, in terms of other harvests, the squash, I thought was going to be a complete failure, but as you could see, it's actually quite the success. I got two from each vine that I planted. Now, two to three would be the ideal, but just two from each vine, considering the conditions and the slow start they had, I'm very happy with that. Next year, what I'll do is I'll plant the squash on the front side of the patch so that it can definitely get as much sunlight as possible. I won't put it in a compromise situation like I did this year. Now in terms of the beans, beans continue to plague me throughout my entire gardening journey. The first year we had so many beans. It was beans everywhere, beans for every single meal. But lately, I don't know if there's something in my soil now. I don't think it's any sort of persistent herbicide, otherwise that would affect my other yields. But there must be some sort of virus that the beans are not on vibe with because this is quite the pathetic harvest for an entire season of bean growing. So that I will probably plant a lot earlier so it doesn't get shaded out by the corn. But this corn just was insanely vigorous. I don't think I could have ever predicted that this corn would have grown as quickly and vigorously as it did. But all in all, very happy with this three sister or milpa garden. We'll definitely do it again, but next year we'll make some adjustments to make sure we get the true proper yield across all three of the sisters instead of just the one, which was the corn this year. Hopefully you guys learned something and I'll see you next year when we improve on our three sisters method and get better and better yields every single year.